Welcome back to Live in the Messiah's Love. I'm your host, Kimisha Lucier, and I'm so glad that you're here. We are so glad to spend this time in the Word of God with you, and we always enjoy and are grateful to the Most High God and appreciate the opportunity to be a part of your walk with Jesus Christ. My beloved, welcome. Thank you for being here with us today. And um, before we get into this episode, will you open us up in prayer, honey? Absolutely. Thank you. Only Father, we thank you, Lord, <laughs> that you're our God and we're your people. Yes, Lord. That we have this privilege to be your children. Thank you, Jesus. And join heirs with Christ, Lord. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lord, we thank you for thank who you, you are. Thank you, Lord. And thank for you. your word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Knowing that it goes out and it doesn't return void. Yes, Lord, we exalt so you. So we thank you for what you're going to teach us or what you have taught us and you are having us teach in this episode so that we can all learn and grow and be more like you, conformed Mm -hmm. to your image, Mm -hmm. the image of Jesus, the Christ, your son, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That is our our desire, like Jesus, is that you be glorified by us here on the earth and by all accomplishing all that you have for us to do. Lord, we bind the hand of the enemy yes, right now. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. In the almighty name of Jesus. We bind him. Mm-hmm. And we loose your spirit of truth mm-hmm. in this recording and in the earth. Lord. Mm-hmm. And we cast the adversary out in the almighty name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. In the mm-hmm. almighty name of Jesus, he is cast out. Mm-hmm. In every area and atmosphere that this is playing or will play. Mm-hmm. Thank you, that Jesus. That people will hear this. There will be peace. Thank you, Jesus. There will be rest because it's given mm-hmm. by you, Lord. Mm-hmm. And that it would turn the hearts of the listeners towards you to not just hear your word, but yes, to Jesus. become doers Thank of you, it. Lord. That they would have first Thank received you, it and it would be written on the tablet of their heart, Lord. We thank you and praise you, knowing that it's already done. Yes, in the Lord. almighty name of yeah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Almighty amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you, my love. Thank you, darling. And thank you, most high God. We appreciate you. We appreciate all that you are, who you are, and everything that you've done, and your great plan and purpose that you have for mm-hmm. us. So thank you for being here, Holy Spirit. And thank you, darling, for that prayer. I appreciate it. Amen. Um, I just wanted to encourage you. I hope that you are applying the word of God. Um not only when we do the laps, but daily, 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 put into mm-hmm. practice the things that the Holy Spirit is revealing and teaching you and that you're learning from the Word of God. Um, you know, I just, like I would tell my kids or even consider for myself, what good is it to learn if you don't do it? Um, <laughs> that's, the, that's the same as... If you're as, not going to apply it. Right. That's right. It's the same of having a knowledge of God, but denying the power contained therein you know, in God mm-hmm. and in his word. And we're not those people. We are the people of God that pursue him and do not draw back and are not slack handed or slowful in doing the things that God has um, created us to do and called us to do. So I hope you've had a good week so far and you're excited about getting into the word because we are. So today's episode is going to be connecting with the power source part two. We started talking about using the name of Jesus in prayer, and then I mentioned spiritual combat, but we're actually going to look at that section of the, the book that we're, um, we're reading, The Name of Jesus by Kenneth e. Hagan. And um, this is on page five of the book, and the first paragraph that's under this section um, says, The name of Jesus is to be used in combat against the unseen forces that surround us. We have authority in the name of Jesus against all powers of darkness. Now, we had that lab um, number nine that gave some illustrations so you could get a visual on this, Um, not on what Brother Hagen is saying, but on the truth of 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 God's word and what the Lord is indicating to us. Remember, as we look at the word of God, the word works because it's God's word, not because I said it, not because someone wrote it, not because or any other person or purpose other than God said it. We talked about the cheese stands alone. (laughs) God and his word is the cheese, right? The Lord is true because he is and because he said so. 
So we've talked about this. Spiritual warfare is not against a person. And really what it means is resisting the forces of darkness or the powers of darkness, however you describe it, evil and wickedness in every um, area and aspect of your life and every arena in particular that God has entrusted your um, entrusted to your care or given you authority over that would be your personal life that would be the life of your your children if you have a family especially if they're under the age of majority um, or living in your household this includes um, so there's some authority concerning your spouse mm-hmm. none of this spiritual combat is not about people control It is about ruling over the power of darkness by enforcing what Christ has already done, the victories that he's already won. That's one of the reasons that we're we're reading this particular book, because it gives us a good, um, not, not just a summarization, but it provides good understanding or information about what Christ has won. It's already, and it's just taking what's in the scripture and providing some more elaboration on it. And again, this is the Lord of God, the Word of God, and the Lord ministering through a ministry of the gospel. So, let's look at Mark chapter sixteen, um, verses sixteen or seventeen through eighteen. And we talked about before when you see scriptures listed out in a book that you're reading. Um, first of all. Only read stuff that the Holy Spirit is guiding you to read Amen. because he knows where you need to eat. He knows where the accurate information is, and he has your best interest in mind. He's only going to lead you in the perfect way. So if he's not asking you or leading you to do certain things, then please don't do it. Don't just go around searching for the next thing to hear and see and do and know about, but stick to what God is asking you to do and the way he's leading you. And um, even when you read those books, take the opportunity to look the scriptures up yourself in your own Bible, because there's there's anointing on you taking the effort to do it. More is gathered and you have the opportunity to confirm what's being said there by looking at the word of God yourself. So verses 17 through 18, and we've read these before, and these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So this is a fact. This is a truth of what belongs to believers. And it's a fact and a truth about how we're supposed to operate and what authority, what the Lord will support in our um, ministries in the earth, but also in how we deal with the adversary Mm -hmm. and enforce what Christ has already done. So this is not a what if. The, there's there's no what if in the Lord. He is a certain God. And he, he gave us clearly defined um, guidance here. Darling, did you have something you wanted to say? Um, just to, I'll say, piggyback off a point you were making. It's not about people control. Absolutely. That's witchcraft. Uh, amen. <laughs> God gives you self-control. And it needs to be exercised. That's right. Also for us. And sure, we are not participating with the schemes of the enemy. Mm-hmm. And you see that in scripture often. And Absolutely. no doubt that it still happens in the world today. Mm-hmm. So the authority, though, and, and the power that comes from the name has been given to us to utilize, to bring things in control, under control, the Lord's control, his authority Subjection. here on mm-hmm. the earth. Mm-hmm. Bring it so, under the subjection of Christ. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's not dealing with the people. All right. Paul makes that abundantly clear in Ephesians that our fight is not against earthly, fleshly things, power, but against powers, principalities, rulers of the darkness mm-hmm. in the heavens and on earth. Mm-hmm. Amen. And um, the, lo- the adversary will try to use people, but the people themselves are not your foe. Exactly. So it's the spirit that's moving behind them. Exactly. To that, create the... That they're cooperating with or mm-hmm. whatever the case is. Now, they may be willing participants. You know, we're not 
saying anything about that. But we, uh-huh. it, those, the truth remains and the fact remains that we who are mature in the things of God have to see beyond the natural demonstration Absolutely. or the symptoms that are manifesting in front of us. So um, in my Bible, next to this section, I have the word fact written because I want it to stick in my mind and in my spirit and my being that this is not something that's changeable. As I walk with God, these signs will accompany me. Um, And that's on page six. That's Mm -hmm. where Brother um, Hagen highlights that. The word also means accompany, not um, so much as dragging behind how we kind of articulate that in English, but more so accompanying. But we also have to understand that God is the one who does the works, and he is the one who demonstrates and manifests things. Your importance, your power are irrelevant. It's his power working through you, because even even our Lord and Savior had that same perspective. Mm-hmm. He said, it's the Father in me. He does the work. Amen. The Son can do nothing of himself, but the Father in me does the work. So because we are like-minded, we have the same approach and uh, perspective that our Lord and Savior has and had in his earthly ministry, we take that um, humble approach. Now, we've already established that all the power of God is vested in the name of Jesus Christ, is supporting, backing, and supplying the name of Jesus Christ. It's contained therein, um, and that is sufficient for us. So we talked about at the end of the last episode about the process that the Lord wanted us to always um, envision and determine that we would come before him in that way. And that is whatever situation is ha- that has arisen or needs to be addressed, no matter what it is, that we always go to our head, the captain, to hear what he has to say about it, whatever he calls it, right? And then the Holy Spirit will articulate, make that information known to us. And then whatever the Lord calls it, We take that in one hand and then we couple it with the name of Jesus. And then we go boldly to the throne of the father for dynamically answered prayers. That's the process we have been practicing and taught. um, I, I won't say intentionally wrong, but it's been wrong to go. I think I want this. I'm going to God and I'm going to bombard heaven with my prayers to twist God's arm and get God to give me something and do something on my behalf. Or I'm going to, uh, as my pastor would say, beg, (laughs) ball and squall. Hmm. I'm going to cry and pray and and barrage heaven and see what sticks. And then I'll say, if it be your will, oh God, it must not have been your will because it didn't happen. Or or there's another example, Mm -hmm. and it goes along with the first thing you said, but let's call it what it is manipulation Mm -hmm. you many have tried to stand on scriptures and say well lord your word says this and that's what i want and this is what your word says so here it is in the name of jesus now give it to me i I got you on a technicality right now you're gonna have to do it it for me and Mm -hmm. and the lord's like no no no, that doesn't that yes that's his word absolutely but that's not what he's saying applies to this specific situation Mm -hmm. or circumstance that's not a proper application so you cannot twist the word of god now and i'll say this there are times where people twist the word and it's not done maliciously it's done out of ignorance but there is no ignorance when you take the time to ask that's the whole beauty (laughs) of the the process of having every prayer answered is you ask and you know exactly what his will is because you asked him and then you listened when he told you and then you said okay not only am i going to listen i'm going to apply it I'm going to do what you said, right? That's, And we talked about this in the episode concerning, or the last episode, we were talking about prayer, right? You know his will now because he's, he's revealed it to you. This is what you I want you to say and do concerning this. And then you say and or do that thing. Or as it said in scripture, and the elders will pray the prayer of faith. What's the prayer of faith? Saying what the Lord told you to say and or do concerning what you asked him about. Amen. And so this is also the same thing in spiritual combat or spiritual warfare. You don't just approach a situation and assume that you're going to do X, Y, and Z when you haven't asked the father. We always have time. And I mean, by asking the father, I mean, ask the son, the head who knows all Mm -hmm. things, what's the right answer to this? And then he will tell you what needs to be 
needs to be done. And the God, the father is going to back the word of his son. That's what he's backing, not what I think or my assumptions. So the same concept still applies. And um, you'll be surprised to find out that uh, maybe you won't be surprised. <laughs> Spirit, a lot of spiritual warfare takes place through prayer. So they're not separate things. There may be different kinds of prayer, but it's still prayer nonetheless. Uh And um, so the signs and wonders that God said would accompany the work that we do in his name as, as we obediently go to the places he tells us and we do the things that he tells us to do, that the power of God is going to work in these particular ways and signs following or accompanying those that believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I just want to point this out to you because sometimes, well, I'll say something, we add our own additions to what God is saying in his word and God is not supporting our additions. He only supports his intention, his motive, his word, and what he said. Nor does he support if you attempt to take something out. Right. Exactly, exactly. So when it comes to um, the signs that follow us, it's not our job to look back and check to make sure that they manifest. (laughs) The adversary has deceived many believers into looking to see if it happened. And that pulling people into as believers in particular, if I don't see it right now, it must not be finished. And that's an absolute lie from the devil. An mm-hmm. absolute lie from the pit of hell. So let's look carefully back at Mark 16, 17, and 18 and see what is written here. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. None of this is about you confirming it with your senses, your natural eyes, with your feelings or your emotions to determine if it's true or not, which is another reason that I have the word fact written next to this in Mm -hmm. my Bible, because it doesn't matter whether I see it or not. Say I lay hands on someone and I, I listen to what the Lord says. He tells me to lay hands on them, pray whatever he tells me to pray. And with my natural eyes, they look exactly the same. Does that mean that the word didn't work? Absolutely not. Does it mean that the job isn't finished? Well, isn't that exactly what we prayed at the beginning of this episode? Mm -hmm. We acknowledged what his word says as Isaiah 55, 11, Mm -hmm. his word goes forth and does not come back void. The rest of that verse is and accomplishes all his plans and his purpose. Amen to that. Not mine, not yours, only the Lord's. Amen. Amen. And sometimes where I've heard this scripture and it says they will lay hands on the sick and they will see them recover. And so because I didn't take the time to come and read the word for myself and bring it before the Lord, I captured it in my mind as though I'm supposed to see it. Mm. And if I don't see it, it must not be finished. And if I don't see it, it did not work. And if I don't see it, I have to repeat myself and do it over again. Well, that's not how the word of God works. Once the word of God goes forth, it's done. It is a completed It is job. finished. So settling in your mind that God's, the fact of God's word is what it is. And once you've done what he told you to do, it's done. Okay. So it's not a war of whether you see it or not, because God is faithful to support and and supply his word. And that is very um, also important when it comes to casting out demons. Uh Um, It's not about what you see what you hear, what it looks like, what it feels like. None of those things matter. The word of God is what it is. The cheese stands alone. Amen. The cheese, the word of God will remain. And when you say what he told you to say, there's no question of whether or not it's going to work because we already looked at first John that says if we pray according to his will, when we use the name of Jesus Christ properly, right? We heard what he said about the situation. We used the word of God and we released his word according to the instruction he gave us. We know that the heavenly father is going to support it. He heard it and he's on it. We know Holy Spirit is activated and he's in action doing the work. Okay. So keep that in mind. And um, we don't approach anything by what we think or the natural um, perspective, what it seems like the answer is, because we don't know everything. God does. We know the one who does that. That's right. Which is why we need to seek him for the answer. 
Amen to that. So you can stand on that and have confidence. It doesn't mean that you go be a demon buster and you're trolling the city looking, you got a devil over there, cast you out. That That's not operating with understanding because again, that's that would be moving in the flesh, not by what the Father is guiding through the Holy Spirit or what the, the Son is guiding and um, ministering through the Holy Spirit. No, we know that Father sets the course, the Son carries out that task, and he's doing everything that the Father wants him to do. And Holy Spirit is the bridge of that conveys and communicates to us the will of the Father through the Son. Okay? Amen. Amen. Um, let's look at Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, honey. All right. I'm going to read it. Not out of the book, though. Uh, I'm going to read it out of the book, meaning the Bible. Mm-hmm. It says, And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So, you have authority over the adversary and to carry out business of the kingdom in the name of Jesus, not in your own name. And so even with this, we're talking about going into all the nations and baptizing and teaching. He always intended that we would get instructions on where to go from who? From the Father. That's through right. Through the Holy Spirit. Jesus did the same thing in his ministry. Mm-hmm. He says plainly in scripture, I would not have even come to you unless I was sent. Amen. And then we even see in Acts, the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Peter, um, Mm -hmm. Stephan, um, Philip, all these people being guided by Holy Spirit to go here and to go there because God had already arranged a divine appointment and a meeting for salvation to be, um, or the word of God, the gospel to be declared at a certain time so that someone else, so people's salvation could come forth is what I want to say. And that people would have the opportunity to believe in the Lord. And there were even times where the apostle Paul said, I've got a great idea. I know where I'm going to go I'd next. I'd like to go over here and visit with these people. And the Holy and- Spirit was like, no, thank you, sir. <laughs> Do not I want go there. you to go over to this location instead. Exactly. And so it is our job to obey. It's his job to command, our job to obey, and then go, and then he will supply the power Amen. to do the work that's needed, the signs and wonders, whatever that looks like. And again, our focus is not to be on the the glitz and the glamour, the the uh, fireworks and what seems important and spectacular it's to be on what is the word of god what is he instructing us and telling us to do here and now and he will take care of all that and he will get the glory because there is a lot of times of especially in ministry that there is internal work that must be done in people Amen. and you may not even be there to witness the final outcome of that situation well like, twofold okay go ahead the before and the after the preparation Mm -hmm. the lord prepares the hearts and the minds Mm -hmm. long before he sends his servant the hearts the minds the atmosphere the environment and then sends his servant or servants his vessels to to go do what he has called them to say and do in the place where he has sent them and then there's exactly what you're just talking about then the fruit of it occurs Mm -hmm. Because he is, and by he, I mean the Lord, Holy Spirit, is ministering to them with the word that was just spoken, just delivered to them, or Mm -hmm. uh, as we were reading in Matthew, that was taught to them, Mm -hmm. preaching and teaching, Jesus came. Amen. Not one or the other, he did both. Here's the overview, and then he got into the details with them. This is how you apply this to your life, how you carry this out in your day to day. Amen. Amen. And we are working with the Holy Spirit and the will of the Father in the earth. Right? So for us to do our part, we have to show up and we have to be obedient, but we also have to ask questions. Um, let's look over at Matthew chapter 18. And I want to um, touch on something right here. Matthew chapter 18, um, verses 19 and 20. All right, it says, Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth 
about anything that they may ask. It shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. For where two or three have gathered together in my name, I am there in their midst. Amen. So what you see in this, what's written, and then there's something on the other side that's not written, but it's also equally implied here. Mm -hmm. Um, Agreement is essential. And it's not just two people going, I got an idea. What you think about this? (laughs) That is irrelevant and it has no power before God. But when we agree with God's plan and two of us on the earth are agreeing with the same plan of God in the earth, now that's dynamic. And the Father will back that up. So here's an example. Why did I say what I said the first time? The Tower of Babel. Think about that. They agreed. They all had, were on one accord with one language, and they had one plan that they were all working on together. Mm-hmm. Did God come and support that plan? Absolutely Did not. he come and add his power to that plan? Why not? Because their plan was actually in direct disobedience to the plan and the instruction that the Father had already set. They thought they had a better idea. They got everybody to agree with them in sin and thought they were going to use the ability that God supplied to get it done. We didn't make ourselves. So they thought they were going to take their human wit and ingenuity and agree on it and do something with it. But God confirmed that he was not going to confirm what they were doing. He showed us by example that he does not support that kind of thing. But what he's talking about here is us agreeing with the father in heaven right? Jesus already told us how to pray back um, earlier in Matthew. Your kingdom come, Father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that's him telling us to align with the Father. And then when I align, and then you align, and then we come together and agree on that, the Father is in the midst of them, and he is going to take care of it. So also something that you see here is if agreement with the father is so powerful what is disagreement has no power right also disagreement not only disagreement with the father has no ability but if you and i are in strife you and the believers around you are in strife when god called you together to believe him together on one accord you won't be able to harness the power of god as efficiently and potently as you would if you were in um, in agreement. So um, in this place, I also want to highlight that husband and wife, if you're married, is the most dynamic prayer team on earth. Why? Because did God give Adam and a pet in the beginning? Did he give him a friend? Did he give him a brother? None was suitable nothing else but a wife. So God has set specific power there. And that's no condemnation on you if you're not married. That is no condemnation in any way, shape or form. You are able to get as much done with your agreement, you agreeing with directly with the father um, and with the will of the father on earth, you're able to get the job done. But if God has um, paired you with a spouse, that's because he wants some dynamic agreement to come to pass between the two of you. So um, pay attention to that. So we're called to agreement, not strife. And, and not just agreement with each other. Exactly. The agreement has to come from the Lord first. Agreement Be- with the Father first. Amen. And then agreement between each other. Exactly. Creating goes, a, a triangle, if you will. Right. And, and I'll, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll say it in this, this way. We brought this scripture up with prayer also. It applies with prayer. It applies with spiritual warfare, right? And it's from First John Chapter 5, I'll begin reading in verse 13, um, 13 through 15. It says, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence which we have before him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests which we have asked from him. Amen. He provides the plan. He provides the the solution, Mm -hmm. the strategy, the whatever is required. 
for us to say and do wherever he sends us, however he asks us to say and or do that thing or those things. Amen. In the situation on the earth, we have to come into agreement and alignment with him and then each other. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Um, Also, something that we need to understand or consider with this is that um, it's not as we agree with the Lord and we trust that the power of God is going forth and the we're using the, the name that is above every name to exercise our spiritual authority and engage in spiritual warfare. Our job is to release the word of God, to Amen. get to get insight from the Lord about what to say, what to do, and then release that, do it, complete that, and then let God do his part. How the name of Jesus does what it does and how God does what he does is not our business. Can, can I give you an example? Uh-huh. Because it also goes to our position. I know we're we're in this, this basic training boot camp, green mm-hmm. team prep mm-hmm. version of this. But we are, the scripture tells us plainly, we are ambassadors or emissaries of the Lord, of mm-hmm. the kingdom of God. An ambassador is supposed to say what the leader of their nation says. Mm-hmm. Not Nothing of their own initiative. <clears throat> mm-hmm. They're to communicate the will, the intent of their, I'll say the person in authority over them. Mm-hmm. Although they may be in authority over others and things, mm-hmm. right? But they don't get to act of their own power, their own accord. And it's not communicating or being responsible for how whatever they are communicating is going to take place. Right. Only to communicate what the leader of the nation they belong to Mm -hmm. says and, uh, if you will, the outcome or the consequences there of whatever they are told, this is what you're to say and or do. And here you're left and right lateral limits. But this is it. Mm-hmm. That's that's their their authority. You know their their authority is to utilize the authority of the leader of the nation they come from, mm-hmm. not in how it's going to be executed. Exactly, exactly. So sometimes when we engage in in spiritual warfare, the adversary will counter with a "How is that going to happen? <laughs> right? How is that possible?" And then try to trail you off into trying to pinpoint in your mind how it's going to happen or visualize it and if it's possible or not. Or the adversary will try to trick you into you trying to dictate to God how he should do his business in the earth. Well, I want you to do it like this, God. I want you to do it like that. And that's that's a fleshly thing as well. well both of those but, are fleshly things, but they, mm-hmm. they do this. They derail what the Lord intended. One of two ways. And the first way that you mentioned, honey, it creates doubt. Mm-hmm. And wait, James makes it very plain. We should not doubt. A doubtful person is unstable in both their in, in all, all their ways, ways. but uh-huh. then they should not expect to receive the thing they asked for. Amen. And then two, the other thing you brought up is now you're out, is getting out of alignment and in the divine order of the Lord's plan because no, the Lord's the one that gives the orders. Mm-hmm. And as you said, Father to the Son to the Holy Spirit to us. Mm-hmm. And we are to move on the word of the Lord, not try to dictate mm-hmm. up the chain of command how they are supposed to move and act and respond. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Remember, he sees all. Um, so let's look at that. For us, if we start trying to get into the, how are you going to do it, God? How does the name of Jesus work? La, la, la. We start getting into God's business. We will lose faith and we won't complete our business. Mm. Um our job is to believe God and obey what he tells us to do. It's his job to work out the plan, right? He's already written this entire thing. It's already contained in the books in heaven. God already knows exactly what needs to be done, when, where, how, and why. He's already got all that. All he needs us to do is partner with him and believe him. Um, back in Mark chapter 9, there is an account of a a child or a um, someone's son actually doesn't say how old he is, but someone's son who is 
possessed with the demon. And the father took his son to the disciples first. And they could not cast the demon out because of their unbelief. They struggled with their faith because they were entertaining emotions, why, how, all of those kind of things that was not their business to entertain. And they were distracted by the um, all these other things, again, that were not their business to be distracted mm-hmm. by. And they were rendered ineffective in this situation. So then the father actually had to take his son to Jesus. And Jesus did not go, that's all right, guys, you'll get it next time to his disciples. That's not what he said. He's like, man, when are you going to get it? (laughs) Uh, Verse 19, it says, oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. So Mm -hmm. the Lord Jesus didn't coddle them. He wasn't pleased. He didn't think it was cute. He actually thought, and was right in this, he expected that they would be take care of this because their mind would be trained in on the proper thing, the name of Jesus and the word of God going forth, Amen. because that's what he instructed them to do. Go and do these things. End of story. Not if it seems t- attainable to you, not if it seems reasonable, not if you understand how it's going to work out, not if you've seen this before and experienced it, not if your friends are in agreement, not if the crowd is on your side. I mean, I can keep going like on a, and absolutely. on with this. <laughs> Not if you, uh, you know, your knees are not shaking, then it's okay. Get going. No, he said, have faith in God. He had already given them do. authority. Exactly. And all those things, right? He but, had given them everything they needed. But then what does he say at the end? And, and depending on your version or what you're reading, usually says, this kind comes out by prayer and fasting. Well, wait a second. Let's understand that. Prayer is exactly what we have been talking about. Lord, what do I say and or do concerning this situation? Mm -hmm. Getting the game plan, the tactics, the strategy from the Lord and then doing that thing. Amen. And the fasting is not withholding food from yourself. Mm -hmm. It's not starving yourself or depriving yourself of anything. Mm -hmm. When the Lord talks about fasting, it's a fasted life. Amen. A life that is solely focused on the Lord and what he is saying and doing in that moment, removing or uprooting from our lives. Discipline yourself. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Disciplining yourself and removing those things that don't reflect him, his nature, his character in your life. You can look at both Psalm, excuse me, Isaiah 58 and Isaiah 61. And you will from Isaiah 58 starts at verse six to the end of the chapter and the entirety of Isaiah chapter 61. And you will find that they are all but identical in what they're communicating. It is a lifestyle Mm -hmm. of the fast or the type of fast that the Lord is discussing. Mm -hmm. It's a fasted lifestyle where there is no doubt. None of those things that the enemy would try to distract you with are in you, which is why Jesus said constantly, hey, the ruler of this world's coming, but he has nothing in me. That is what the Lord is looking for in his elite warriors Amen. in God's end time army, which Lord if you're God. a part of this and you've Amen. made it this far, Amen. you are progressing in becoming part of his end time army and the elite forces you, in his end time army. Amen. Amen. So let's understand that. But also just to, to add to something that you were saying there, I sense this is important mm-hmm. to share, is when we're looking for what to say, Ask the Lord for it, right? Amen. Not doubting, not adding to, not taking away, which mm-hmm. is why Ecclesiastes 5, 2 has this. So this is not a new thing. It's Amen. not a, just a New Testament. The, the, the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His word forever. is consistent throughout, mm-hmm. right? He says in Isaiah, or sorry, Ecclesiastes 5, 2, but God is in heaven and you are on earth, so let your, your words, words be few. Why? <laughs> Why do your words need to be few? Because like Jesus, like the Holy Spirit, and wait, wait, even the natural example found in Mo- Moses, mm-hmm. just for, for three examples, we're supposed to say what the Lord says to say and do what he is doing here on the earth as it is in heaven. Amen. It's not about what my words or your words or anyone else's words can do. They can do absolutely nothing. It's the Lord's word that everything hinges upon, that Amen. everything moves in the heavens and on the earth. Amen. We're waiting for his command. 
Glory to God. First Peter 4, 11 says this, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability, as of the ability, which God giveth that God and all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So is the li- same, align your mouth. whether it's in prayer mm-hmm. or it's in spiritual warfare, it is, this is the lifestyle and everything. What is the Lord saying? for you to say and do and where to go to say it and do it and how you should say it or do it whatever it is that he's commanding you in that situation and circumstance amen and in the gospels um the lord jesus tells his disciples uh not to prepare what they're going to say beforehand amen when they are brought before councils and and things of that nature but that the holy spirit would give them what to say in the moment and that instruction applies to everything that we do. And it also tells us that we need to, um, and encourages us, but tells us that we need to have a moment by moment ability to hear from God. Amen. We need to cultivate that within ourselves. And um, as we've been going through the labs, that's exactly what we've been doing, cultivating that ability to hear from God at the In drop the of a hat uh, as you go. Not that um, we shouldn't do the, I'll say the proper thing and ask the Lord ahead of time. Sometimes there is no ahead of time. Exactly. Sometimes it, it is only in the moment. Mm-hmm. If we have the time, by all means, we should be prepared. Mm-hmm. But praying in the Spirit Amen. in our, our regular time brings those things up. The Holy Spirit will tell Amen. us things to exactly. come as well. But sometimes, because we're humans, it, things can seem like a surprise. Um, and there are sometimes the Lord's like, I don't want to tell you up front. I want That's you to it. in right? the moment. Right. Elisha said the Lord has hidden this thing from me when when the um the mom came exactly um, concerning her son. He didn't un- he didn't know and God wasn't holding a secret, but God said, I I'll tell you in the moment when I what I want you to do. That's and it. he had to walk moment by moment. And we saw that same example in our Lord and Savior. He took time ahead of time to pray and get counsel from the Father, Amen. get his day lined out. And he operated moment by moment in what was what the Holy Spirit was telling him and leading him and guiding him to do as things came to him. So that's the structure that we see in the Word of God. That is the mm-hmm. pathway that we see laid out. And it is wise for us to walk in that because that is where we will have good success. Exactly. Um, when you wing it. You it's going to be hit or miss, and it's going to be a lot more miss. Mostly miss. miss. Yes. <laughs> it's going to be a lot more miss. Because why? The Lord made that very plain as well. Mm-hmm. Without, Without me, you, me can... you can do nothing. He didn't say some things. Right. He said nothing. 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 No thing. So um, we are not those who are inept or inadequate or unsuccessful. Or unskilled or untrained. That's Right. Or, no, we, we should be the most skilled and the most trained and the most disciplined. The most disciplined. Living that fasted lifestyle. Glory with to God. total dependence on the Lord and knowing his heart on the matter. Amen. And I, I really love and appreciate that you said that because some many people believe when they read that section of scripture that it's talking about the demon won't come out unless you fast and pray first. So the demon's going to sit right there while you have a three-day fast. And <laughs> no, one. that no. okay, that's inconsistent. <laughs> Jesus didn't have a fast. Or, or, or you cast. should be fasting all the time so you're already, already prepared. And right, no, okay. no, that's not accurate either. But he's talking about a lifestyle mm-hmm. that is restrained from um, indulging the flesh, that is consistent and adherent to the things of God, sticking to the things of God, and always keeps the connection to God intact. So you can clearly and accurately hear what the Lord is saying for you to do and say in that moment. Amen. Jesus was always connected to the power source. Amen. So we should always be connected. So again, there's no fear, right? That fear is driven out by self-discipline and by absolute trust and confidence in the Lord. We have confidence. Our hope is vested to know that the name of Jesus will do what it's supposed to do. Whether we know how God's going to work it out or the specific mechanics of how the Holy Spirit does what he does, that's none of our business. Our job is to believe in that name and to use that name as he has given us instruction. We don't 
twist the word of God or try to use the name as a means to commit sin or by try to manipulate the father because it's not going to work. And we realize that Holy Spirit is the muscle behind the name of Jesus Amen. and the same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead, right, is lives backing up that name. Us. That's right, lives in us, but it's backing up that name mm-hmm. and is getting the work done. So we have nothing to be afraid of. We have nothing to doubt. And we can have all confidence in the Lord and in the Father and in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is powerful, as well, powerful today as it ever was. That was the command, right? You will receive power from on high when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Amen. Well, there you go. Be baptized in the Holy Spirit, and you'll receive that power. You already have the authority. Amen. Amen. Have them both working for you. Glory to God. And that that absolutely brings boldness and confidence because Holy Spirit has free reign and direct access to move and flow through you however he wants to. Well, all right. We're going to stop there for today. Um, In all things, we hope that you're blessed by this word and that you are allowing the word of God to work in you because we believe the Holy Spirit is doing his job. And we're not those who try to override anybody else's will, but we are believing the best for you and concerning you and that you are allowing God's word to grow on the inside of you and you're activating it in your own life. Um, take the opportunity. If you know someone that is hungry for the word of God, ha- share the word with them, come together and have times of group fellowship around these episodes and, uh, listen to the podcast together, come back and compare notes and encourage each other in the word of God so that you are able to be strengthened on your journey as well. We love you and we're praying for you and remember to live your life in the Messiah's love. God bless you. Want to know more about a day of prayer? Sign up for our newsletter where you'll get the latest updates on the ministry, inspiring messages and coupon codes for the merch shop. Visit our website, adayofprayer.org. Click on connect in the menu bar and complete the form. Be sure to check the box that says subscribe.